Christy Wallace, CEO of Elevate Network. Hey, hey. All right. So we are going. Is that, uh, I'm right here. I got it. Here we go. Okay. There you go. I have a really loud voice anyway. Hi. <laughs> We're gonna get real here for a few minutes. We're gonna have some fun. Then Sally Krawcheck will be on stage to close it out. And then a little insider tip, they're setting up wine and cocktails outside. So it's gonna get really fun. The wine won't be there till after I finish talking though. Yeah. <laughs> so don't go anywhere. Uh, I, I, I'm amazed by what's happened today. I mean, I've just heard so many great things about how we can create change in our communities, in our careers, in our companies. But we want to talk now about how we can be more deliberate with ourselves and, and who we are. And Kelly is just a rock star, literally, literally. Um, and you've done some amazing things with your life. Is, is that what it's about? Have you, have you figured it all out? And uh, what's next? T do I look like I know anything? I don't think so, no. I don't, but I try. You try? Yes. So, so how did you get to this point? Is it just, is it luck? Is there a lot of intuition? Well, I mean, first of all, it's nice to meet everybody. Hey, how's it going? It's all chicks, my, my specialty, so that's good. Um, how did I do it? Well, I don't really know. You know, I didn't really have a plan, and so even thinking about what we would talk about today, I mean, there's all these words around, like, making you're the brand and branding and female empowerment and disruption, and I'm not poo-pooing any of that. I just want to be really clear, but I thought there's so many people that are talking about that, like, what do I have to offer as a woman that, that I think at 51, um, looking back, you know, is, is interesting for other women. And for me, it was about this concept of our inner voice. And I don't really hear a lot of people talking about that. So people are like, you know, you need to go where the money is. You need to get paid the same amount of money as men. You need to do the right thing. You need to do what feels good, you know? If I did what feels good all day, I definitely would not own a company. <laughs> you know? I'd be at the fucking wine bar with like a skater boy and getting a massage yeah, afterward. Right here, like, right here. That's what I'd be doing. We're hanging out together. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I don't really think that's true. I don't go where the love is. No, the love is not like at HSBC if you don't have a line of credit. There's no line there, but you still have to go. Okay? So I don't know. I thought, I thought it was important to talk about our inner voice. You know, this this concept of, all right, let me just ask you guys a question, and I, I'm not, like, this isn't a talk that I plan, so it's not, like, in my rap, but how many of you, like, I'll use a personal experience, it'll make it easy for you guys to relate, and then you can tell me if you feel the same way. Sometimes when I wake up in the morning, this voice will say to me, how much longer are you gonna continue to do this like this? How much longer are you going to allow this client to speak to you like this, or this client not to pay, or how much longer are you going to allow yourself not to take time to go to the gym, or to do this, hey, hey, hey. And for me, that voice starts out like really interesting, like Gabriel Byrne and in treatment, like really. And then, you know, sometimes it's like, how much longer? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna listen to you now, you know, but for me, that voice has been the thing that really has allowed me to make the moves that I've made that have made my company great. And it's also the voice that when other people watch me following it, if it's not on point with the business plan, terrifies people. They're like, what are you doing? You're not on page. And I'm like, who's page? Like a Harvard MBA who like studied the theory of this that doesn't do it every day or and it doesn't mean that this guidance isn't the right thing, you know? But I found myself at like, okay, I'm 51, I've been on TV like 10 years, writing books, single mom, supporting my mother, raising a kid in private school in New York, just translation expensive. <laughs> and, um, and so people go, you should do what you love. I'm like, well, I haven't even had time to fucking think about that question. Sorry to say the F word in front of you. 
feminism is an F word. Um, <laughs> that's what I want you to remember me for. Um, but <laughs> this she, is that, not what we that, planned. That's my eight-year-old son who's getting a full. <laughs> Mrs. Benjamin, do you want to come up and sit with us for the rest of the talk? Okay, come on up here. You want to sit in the middle? You want to sit near your mom? You want to sit next to your mom? Benjamin, he is eight. And uh, he will train you because you're young a feminist. and still malleable. And he is here okay. to see strong women and men talk about, work, about equality and about a, a different future. Are you okay? You can leave at any time, by the way. Okay, child labor laws. You don't have to be here. <laughs> I, I have a labor attorney, so I know. You can always leave, okay? We'll keep it under 30 minutes, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Right? And that, then we don't yeah, break it's any up to labor him. laws. We're good. But he'll remember this for a while. Yeah. Um, so intuition is what we're talking about, yeah? I mean, but I, I just think... So I get it, and, and I, like, I, I certainly wake up a lot of days and I'm like, how much longer can I do this, or can I, but, but how do you change it? I mean, I think- Okay, so when people were like saying, oh, you should do what you love, so like at 48, sorry, because I got distracted when I said the F word, feminism, and then invited Benjamin on stage. Um, like around 48, I started to think like, my God, you know, I've had perceived success, and I guess I've had some I guess what society would call successes. And I know for myself, my success has been, you know, it's a biblical quote, and I'm not, I'm a pagan, so I'm not a biblical person, but to thine own self be true. And like, how can you be true to yourself if you don't know yourself? And as women, like, we're told always what to do, like, be skinny, be pretty, be agreeable, get a husband, get married, have a baby. And then I was like, my God, I have to give birth to myself, you know? And so I gave birth to my daughter, at 36, but I'd given birth to myself or the beginning of myself before that. And I was really grateful that I had the opportunity to do that as a woman. Um, but then I was like, by the time I was 40, I was like, okay, you know, I kind of done it, right? Like fashion PR, like one more TV show calls me, goes, do you want to come and be a judge, you know, and make people cry and like scream at people? And it's like, okay, I've done this trick a hundred times. Like, I've represented Valentino and Vivian Westwood and Christie's and all these amazing companies and I've run a pretty large agency and it's had all different sizes and I've learned about economics and P&L and you know, gap loans and lines of credit, like enough, right? And we could talk about this all day long, but at 48 I was like, what about me? Like I did everything I was told to do and I did it well or I did it really well or I did it awesome. My daughter's thriving, she's great. My mom has a nice house that I bought her. But what about me? Like, I've gained 30 pounds, I'm 40, depending on the PR moment. I'm tired, and now what do I do with all of this knowledge and all of this accomplishment? Do I sit here at my desk every day while the world is changing, that's the nicest way I could put it, and say, oh my God, you know, we have this really beautiful new blue dress. It's, you know, has a peplum. It's all about peplums, <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> and then the opposite side of that is fashion is amazing and, you know, there's a ton of women and blah, blah, blah. Or like, what do I want to do, you know? And I thought it was really interesting that I would even allow myself that because I'm so dependent on my lifestyle and the amount of money I make and who I know. And But then I just thought like, what are the next 30 years of my life gonna look like? Or even 20 and what do I wanna do? So I personally feel like this concept of the inner voice because about seven years ago my inner voice was like, TikTok applesauce, this party's almost over. How much longer are we gonna do this? You know, are you using everything that you know and everyone that you know to the advantage of yourself and to society? Or are you just staying where you are because it's easy? Or it's hard, but the hard is easier than the easy that would be hard. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah. You know, so what are we doing? Like, is this really gonna be your biggest contribution to yourself and humanity that you're a fashion person? You know, what about women? What about the ancient feminine? What about your daughter? What about you living in a third world country, or not third world, but let's say Jamaica or India, 
thank you, that's where I wanna go, and just eating a mango every day. Like, what about that, right? So this is what I thought was a really important talk, you know, so I'm starting a brand now, and I'm not here to PR it, so please don't write about it if you're in the press, but I decided that I love to do magic, right? Because when I got on TV, everybody's like, she's a witch. And I'm like, a witch? My God, that's so much work. Have you ever, have you ever met a witch? Have you ever met Lana Del Rey? She's a, she's a witch. Um, well, she said she was anyway. And have you ever met Donald Trump? He's, he's being hunted on a witch hunt. Um, it's a popular word. And so I had been trained in Indian. So at the beginning of my career, you know, I did all of these things and then I felt really empty. And so I went on a spiritual search and I found for me what became my spiritual tradition, which was Eastern mysticism with a focus on Indian goddesses like Kali and Svarasvati. And, you know, this time before monotheism, when the feminine was wreaking havoc and killing demons and winning wars. And I thought, I'm going to need their help for what I'm doing. And so, uh, you know, I, I built a really strong spiritual practice that I do on a daily basis and have done on a daily basis since I'm 21, so for 30 years. And, you know, the thing that I love to do more than anything, so when, I, when these people started calling me a witch, I was like, that's like 1692. Like, I'm involved in practice that originated at the beginning of humanity. <laughs> like, witchcraft is so, like, new. And so I went to Salem, and uh, I got initiated by an Italian stray guy named Lori Bruno, and I got trained in witchcraft. And then I also got trained in voodoo, and a non-animal sacrifice voodoo, okay, um, which is really an elemental religion of paganism. And I started really looking at this whole cross-section, and I was like, when I started going to these stores, I noticed that they all had really cool cleaning products. And it would be like hex reversal, or like ka-ching, like bring money, like money floor cleaner. Or like love me, love me, love me. And I'm like, why, don't, why can't we buy that, like at Whole Foods? And I was like, I wanna make a line of cleaning products. So I called my best friend, Kelly Osborne, and uh, you know, her dad's like the king of darkness, so that makes it easy. We have Ozzy on our side. And then we have Sharon, because she has a talk show, and then there's Kelly. And then I called a friend of mine who was the CEO of Ben & Jerry's, and I represented them for like eight years, and I told him the idea. And he said, this is a fantastic idea. And I was like, really? And he goes, yeah, it's a total white space thing. This is gonna be awesome. You need to meet Jeffrey Hollander, who's the CEO of 7th Gen, 7th Generation. So, I just got so excited for the first time in like probably 10 years about this phone call, you know? And I knew he was gonna be a really important person in my life. And I knew not to gab about witchcraft and crazy stuff because successful white men have like a zero tolerance policy for emotion. <laughs> and it, it took me 25 years to learn that. And I, I, and I lost a lot of deals because they'd be like, you don't understand. Like, they're like, we don't want to understand. There's like a bottom line and you're not getting it and you're too crazy. And so I knew by this point to be buttoned up and I was like, I'd like to make a line of cre cleaning products that are um, based on sacred cleansing rituals, which all religions universally have used since the beginning of time. And with the advent of feminism, women have poo-pooed the concept of cleaning their own homes. And I want to bring that back because it's a magical spiritual process. And he's like, <laughs> and I said, and cleanliness is next to goddessness and being on your hands and knees never felt so good. <laughs> and, and, and I think Mr. Clean is suspect. <laughs> and, um, and so he said, okay. And he gave me the name of his formulator. So the, the moral of this story is when you do start listening, listening to your inner voice, even if it isn't the conversation people think you're gonna have with them based on what you've already accomplished and where you're headed, and you really understand the arena that you're getting into, like not to be too kooky, right? And you can deliver it. Like Twitter's really helped us hone our communication skills. And we can give them like a Twitter pitch right, then things can happen. And out of nowhere, this man said to me, 
you know, I'd like to introduce you to my formulator. She formulated all my products. Now, in the brand business, nobody does that because that's their lethal weapon, right? That's their lethal weapon. That's like, that's like your girlfriend saying, I want you to meet the hottest guy I've ever dated, and I'm going to let you have him, and you can marry him, right? In the brand business, that, that's what that's like, so you know. <laughs> and um, I know. It's been crazy up here today, right? Okay. <laughs> and so I met Heather Beach, and I, I, so it's Heather Beach, Kelly, and I. So, so we're doing this, and so we're going into this space now. So this is something that, like today, I just thought it was really important to talk about because so many times, like in the past, like if I've been unhappy in my job, which I have, um, or you know, not satisfied with where my business is or where I'm headed, or satisfied, but just like, what else am I gonna do? Nobody bothered ever really to tell me like, hey, you know what? Like, cause sometimes I just couldn't leave. Do you know what I mean? Like, I had a bottom line, I have to deliver money every month to my house like everybody else. And I was like stuck in that position. But it's like, I do think it's such an important time right now when technology is stealing everything from us. You know, we, we sleep, I don't know about you, but I used to sleep with my cell phone under my bed. I used to leave my ringer on. Before I had a child, I was available seven days a week for work. You know, my lifestyle of like living in New York was not amazing as far as compared to like my sister who lives in Blacksburg, Virginia in a 10,000 square foot house at a fraction of my New York apartment. And I started just to find myself suffering. And then, so the question that I'm asking now as a businesswoman is like, is it true that if we listen to our inner voice and do what we love, will we be happy, joyous, and free? Right? And I personally think that if you make more than $70,000 a year, or under $3 million a year, and like my take home pay is under $3 million a year, and it's under $1.5 million a year, to give you an idea, so I don't sound super rich, because I'm not, because you'd be like, well, what are you doing with the other million? <laughs> Then the thing is, I feel like, you know, it, it's better to make less money and have a really nice life, right? Because how many people do you think that are like dying and, you know, they're on their deathbed and they're like, you know, their families are on their like, you know, kind of sorting their life out and they're like, I want to tell you about this deal that I did in Switzerland. It was Stad. It was on December 20th. I rolled in with five bucks in my pocket and a Rolex. You think people are really saying that? So my thing is, is that as women, time's up. I got that. I can read. Thank you. The other people went way later than us, though. I'd also like to say that. Um, <laughs> but I think as women, we are creative. We birth life, right? Like we bring life into this world. We're the creative people, we're the intuitive people. And so my message today is really about when you leave here, I hope that some part of this conversation stays with you and that I hope it stays with me too because I'm in the same process, but that we do what we love and we start to say, you know what? I get it. You want to pay me $100,000 a year. This is my dream, but you know what? You're rude and I don't like your vibe. And this isn't what I'm aligned with, right? Everybody's gonna be rude for a day or two, right? But I, I mean, literally in the bigger picture, if it's, who wants to go to a dentist that doesn't wanna be a dentist? Not me. Do you know what I mean? So can we be the manifestation of our inner voices, guidance of ourselves, and do what we love? Because, you know, I've seen Subway, people that work at the Subway, they're super happy. Like, hi, would you like a token? Well, I actually don't take the subway, no. <laughs> We're like at a train station, I meant. But like, do you know what I mean? Um, Keeping wanna... it real, Kelly. Keeping it real. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I appreciate this. And, um, and I'm going to say something that initially will sound depressing, but it's not, uh, which is that humans are living to 100. And if you think that you spend 20 years of your life, you know, up to 20 years in school, and then the next 40, 45 years working, and then you've got another, you know, 40 some years after that. And 
So we have power now, uh, and you've mentioned your 51, but I mean, I think like that's only halfway through. I'm going to be dead before 100. But, <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm just remember that psychic and publicity both start with P. I'm definitely not living to 100. <laughs> but this is where I think we, what you're saying is really resonates because we have, we have the power to, to control our destiny and to create the life and the legacy that we want to see. And you can live every day. And sometimes you do have to live every day um, just to pay the bills or to get by or to get to a certain point. But there will become that moment when you have more power, when you can control who you are and where you're going. And so keep thinking about that. I think that's now, though. I actually absolutely just want to tell you that it's now. Like, if you think about moments in society where amazing things happen, like, let's just talk about Rosa Parks. You know, Rosa Parks might have, may or may not have had the thought, I'm an amazing, magical human being, which I hope you guys all do and that you all know that you're a divine representation of the divine mother and that you are magical. Like, seriously, I believe it. It's not female empowerment bullshit. And people tell you all the, sorry, people tell you all the time not to say that about yourself, but why wouldn't you want to say that you're a divine being and that you're here to manifest a divine reality for yourself, which includes abundance. But there are plenty of people who don't have a lot of money that are very abundant, and there are plenty of people who have a ton of money that have no abundance. So this concept that it's equated with a bank balance is not a reality, it's a big lie. It's a big, big, big lie. And I'm somebody who makes people buy stuff that they don't need. I've spent my whole life doing that. So I'm telling you from the front lines of that messaging, it's a big lie. An Hermes bracelet's not gonna make you a hot chick and it's not gonna make you elegant. What's gonna make you elegant is compassion and understanding and good manners. You know what I mean? Right. Seriously. So um, I really hope I mean, what I really hope for the world, and I think it will start with women, is this concept of, you know, going, doing what we love. You know, I'd rather be 80 with no money but doing what I love because I know I'm going to be taken care of then. You know? And if you do need money to last you because we live in an ageist society, right, for 30 years, you're going to have to make a lot of money. Like, I make a ton of cash. I don't have enough cash to live the lifestyle I live right now until I'm 100, thank you very much. That's why I'm like, no. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, just enjoy life. I mean, it's, it's a very amazing experience. And make brands and think about things, whether you want to go work for a women's organization. You know, it breaks my heart when I wake up and I look at the media and I see what's going on and I, I see these girls all around the world, like sex trafficking, like for me, I'm involved in reminding people about the ancient feminine and the power of the feminine and that magic is real and that we are powerful. That's my thing. And I'm a role model to be like, you don't have to wear makeup. You don't have to have a body con dress. You can if you want. You know, make your own money so you can marry who you want. And if you want to get married or do whatever, but like just go out there and trailblaze. There are very few examples of women in this world, in the media, okay, that are coming forward that are doing that. And you guys need to be suspect about it. Because I don't want to see another size zero actress, you know, with veneers talking to me about fucking feminism when she's 22 from Encino. I don't care. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, it has to come from our actions. The truth of the matter is, is that everything in this world is experienced in the sense of duality. Male, female, he, she, we, me, day, night, love, hate, good, bad. It's a reality, you know? And until we understand that we are ruthless, and if you look at nature and you look at mother nature, like you look at wolves, right? Do you think when another female wolf comes into a wolf pack, that female wolf goes, it's really inappropriate that you're hitting on my guy? No, it's death, okay? <laughs> it's death. Okay, it's one dead female wolf, okay? That's better than Little Red Riding Hood. And we need to look at nature because that is our nature, you know? And there have been shifts in this world when people try to own and take over that nature that tells us that that's not our nature. And so when we try to be in our truth, we're told, don't do that. You're hysterical, meaning of the uterus, that's where that word comes from. I don't know if you know the etymology of hysterical, it's from hysterio, meaning of the uterus. 
you know, you're crazy. You need to calm down. Like, you know, Rosa Parks, that's what I was saying, like her inner voice one day, she was just like, I am not. No. You know, Gandhi was like, I'm not gonna talk. I'm just gonna sit here. I mean, you think about Harriet Tubman and Eleanor Roosevelt. These people did not do the right thing. They did what their inner voice told them to do. That's what they did. And so, bringing it back, I hope that you guys do that. I really, really do, because I think the world will be a tremendously better place if we all did that more. Thank you. Thank you. Give it an extra hand to Benjamin, take it back. Thank you so much to Kelly, Christy, and Ben. And now for a closing keynote with Sally Krawcheck.